Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Steve Reinhardt, and welcome to episode 48 of Stellaris Make a Corp with uh, Ancient Relics. I almost said Ancient Wonders. <laughs> yep, uh, as was with the previous episode, this episode we are going to be joined by a Cosmo Suno, and just a little, a little bit of a head, uh, just as a little bit of a heads up, as of next episode, this will be tied with the original Factorio Bob Mods uh, series as the longest direct to YouTube series on my channel as of next episode. That is 49 episodes long. In, like, once that's recorded and I swap over and record episode 50, which will be an hour long, as you know, that will, I might just do, like, an hour and a half instead, since technically that, like, episode 50 will make, uh, this series my longest series ever. Anomaly found. I mean, theoretic, theoretically, technically, it's already my longest series ever, because, like, if you take the amount of minutes put into it, it probably isn't, it, like, um, most likely would probably be one of the, uh, streamed series, because if, if I'm remembering correctly, the original Factorio Bob's mods videos are, like, 15 to 20 minutes long. If I'm remembering correctly. I'm probably not, but if I am... Alright, I want to do... Oh my god. Living Crystals. Oh, I, I, I'm laughing about one of the negative reviews. For uh, rings of this uh, ring of Elysium. Yes, there. One of the one of the reviews is complaining that it's got that it's got cosmetics. That's literally it. That is the most whiny and entitled bullshit review I've ever seen. I used to enjoy it when it was nice, cool, and unique, but then they turned another Fortnite-style game with skins and crap. You know, Fortnite was not the first to do that. Counter. Strike. Global. Offense. All I have to say about the... You now leave the door. <laughs> like, like, all I have to say to that person is shut the fuck up and sit down. Uh, that is the most whiny and entitled... Bullshit review ever. Like, okay, if it would be, yeah, it would still be whiny, but it would be slightly. Not, f uh, it would be just having skins doesn't make it a Fortnite clone, right? No, it also needs building. Yeah, like wacky graphics. To be fair, uh, it would be fair to complain about the cosmetics only if. Sitting, uh, sitting there, and like doing, uh, having cosmetics gives obvious, clear bonuses. No, they're just cosmetics. Like if they're just cos, if they're just cosmetics that make your guns look fancy or your character look slightly unique, then yeah, slightly unique. When there's about five hundred other people running around with the exact same skin. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, like. There's no problem with that, but if there, if like for instance, having this one skin on your S on your SMG gives you a, a fifty percent more clip, or ten percent more accuracy, that's a problem. Especially if you can't sit there and say, like I could get these skins permanently through playing the game. If you could get the skins permanently through playing the game then 
that's fine. But if you can only get the skins that have bonuses to them by purchasing it, like sitting down saying, I spent like 50 real dollars to get this cosmetic skin that's a legendary skin that gives 50% more clip, 10% more accuracy, and 5% uh, more reload speed. Or less reload speed would technically be the good part. And, like, stuff like that, if they do stuff like that, that's when the game turns, uh, like, starts the turn to pay to win. Which is never a good thing for a free-to-play game. No, no. A Ring of Elysium is not that stupid. No. Most developers of free-to-play games aren't that stupid. They aren't. Thankfully. Like, for instance, uh, Nexon with Mabinaki, most of that stuff is cosmetic. Yes, they do have some special uh, fancy weapons and gear. Yeah, but that stuff uh, is like... From, from the last gacha that they released, it was like a... 0.5 to 0.1 percent chance for the best stuff which would give you like an edge but here's the thing you actually don't need that overpowered gear to be overpowered right there was one person that i played the game with they were overpowered as all hell using a basic fucking Dagger. Yeah. Mm. It's like, yeah, you don't, you don't need all those, uh, those R and Jesus reforges or all that other, or all those super fancy weapons. I just like use them because they look pretty. Yeah, yeah. Like lightsabers. That well. Wait, no, I mean, mana sabers. Oh right, mana sabers. <laughs> But that's usually a sign of good game design. When you can sit there and say, I spent 50 bucks on this weapon to, uh, to get this weapon, but I only use it for like a, a cosmetic, like aesthetics. The weapon I use in dungeons and PVP is this weapon I found on the ground, uh, ground three weeks ago. <laughs> I have made it my spirit weapon. I call it Creptastic. <laughs> yeah, but like, that is I, a I, sign I had, of... I once had a spirit weapon that was a wooden sword. <laughs> Why? That's the easiest weapon to get your hands on for repairs. But like, that that's... the Gladius. That's still a sign of good game design. When you... I, I only really dive into my overpowered stuff Ships if refitted. I don't want to deal with the boss. Right. It's, you know the game is designed good if you're more likely to use the stuff that you find on the ground than the stuff that you purchase. Like, for instance, Borderlands. The best weapons are the weapons you find from uh, enemies, whether it's a boss, uh, uh, a legendary... A random, peon, a, a random peon that you fought 50 times. In or five, the pile of shit you just punched. Or the pile of shit that you just punched. Ironically, literally a pile of shit because uh, some animals. Quote, unquote, animals. It, it's like... It's the animals, the things that... The things that more look like they just broke out of an out of a uh, experimental creatures lab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's the big part. If you're more likely to use Taking evasive action, why? Sapphire lurkers in what region? That region. Oh, you're not. Okay. You're not streaming it anymore. I'm not. No, I'm streaming to Discord anymore. 
Oh, probably because um, probably because I had it off for too long. Boop. <gasps> there we go. You idiot. Yep, that's me. Is it fixed? Yeah, it's fixed. Awesome. Oh my god, someone playing Sea of Thieves. <gasps> All right, so let's see. Uh, thick layers of ash and a notable mass extinction event in the geological record can coincide with the material uh, previously extracted from runner data crystals, suggesting the runner firebombed Rochelle 3 with a gel uh, gelling incendiary roughly 7 million years ago. Widespread deforestation of planets surface disrupted local ecosystems and a lack of oxygen fi uh, fixing vegetation gradually depleted the planet's atmosphere over the next 60,000 years mm. Let's see mm. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Construction that complete. Would probably help. Construction complete. Construction complete. Construction complete. Jesus Christ, how fucking long ago was it? <laughs> oh, fuck it. Boom. There. Fix that. Okay, it's not because of the uh, alloys. It's because... Nah, it couldn't be because of dark matter. Oh, yeah. No. There we go. Ships refitted. Oh, yeah. I'm able to communicate. Oh, new contact. Uh, communicate from previous unknown spacefaring empire, calling themselves the Empire of Rotan Beer. They claim to have learned of our existence by listening in on the communications of another planet, of another empire we are in contact with. I wonder which empire. Let's see, they are militarist. Hold on, let's see, us. All right, so they are militarist. We are also militarist. They are collectivist. We are... A fanatic individualist, so that could be a form of contention. They are a fanatic ecologist. We are materialist. They are egalitarian. And that does not affect us whatsoever, because we are neither on that. And I know ecologist is, uh, the opposite of ecologist is not exactly a materialist. But, um, like, materialism, simply put, materialism is like, uh, uh, like, fanatic materialism would essentially say, uh, exploit everything, regardless of oh the costs. So, uh, once it looks like, uh, I think that's, um, hold up, uh, greetings. Species. Uh huh. I think that's from there. Blah blah blah. Yeah, I think that's from the um. Vol uh, Voltron. Ah, oh, there we go. I think that's from uh. Yes, that's Voltron. All right. That's one of the background characters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I keep forgetting that I have the uh, you have too uh, many mods. Voltron mod. You have too many mods. Yeah, I have too many mods. A uh, collision with a smaller asteroid has revealed a small blast door uh, or airlock mm -hmm. extending slightly from the surface of... Mm -hmm. T 
TL, uh, TFL uh, 394. It appears to be thousands of years old and has previously been concealed by rocks and dust. For unknown reasons, scans cannot penetrate the asteroid's interior, and the blast door is impervious to conventional cutting tools. To learn what's behind the door, a team would likely have to dig their way towards the center of the asteroid from another direction. Hold up. Is that in... Don't tell me that's in this. What region is this in? It's not there. It's not there. God damn it. Damn it, game. Asteroid blast door. Alright, let's see. Hey, university! The Baron. Alright, so we've got Ruined World, which is right there. Strange Asteroid is right there, I believe. Yeah. The Baron is right there, which we are working on. Huh. Interesting. Oh! Uh, okay, yeah. Now this is finished. So, Guild of Engineers. Yay! We've got an Ascension perk slot. Let's see. Construction complete. Thank you for the uh, info. Let's see, we could do Transcendent lear Learning. We could do Arcology Pod. <gasps> Monopolises! Space industrialization. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Econopolis and then space industrialization. And then maybe the flesh is weak. Maybe we'll start that next. Okay, so Arcology Project. Boom. Decisions. Arcology Project. All district slots on the planet must be filled with city districts. Number of uncleared blockers is less than one. We've got zero, which is how many we need. Oh. So, what that means is everything on this planet needs to be... Obliterated. Lovely. Uh, the city districts. Which is this, this right here. So what I'm going to do is build two more. Uh, let's see. Replace the with the it. Why? Interesting. Oh, probably because we're already doing one. Okay. E. Cool. Oh, you know what I think? Yeah. That's why I don't have it. That's why I didn't know where it was. I just discovered a new uh, empire and it revealed their uh, archaeological site. Oh! They have a gateway. Oh, I could very easily pop. Uh, like, once I get that research, I could very easily pop in and just be like, whoop, your territory is mine now. And then and then pop in somewhere else, whoop, your territory is mine now. Oh, I love gateways. And then, of yeah. course, later on, as some of you know, I could also turn around and start building gateways. 
And at that point... Gateway. I will be God. Normally, at that point, it's like... Look at me. I am the crisis now. Hey, it's like, look at me. I am the crisis now. Ah, that one game where it's like, alright, I've taken over half the... And I just, uh, destroyed a... Fallen Empire. New awesome. <laughs> like, once you, once you reach the point where it's like you're more powerful than the Fallen Empire, is it's like, alright, what now? Like, at that point, the only thing that would really, like, would have contended with me would have been... The end game crisis. Oh, 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 oh. see, that was forty-eight. Lost end game crisis. Mm. So that was episode forty-eight. Uh, for those of you who enjoyed the video, do not. Uh, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, and if you enjoyed the video, do not forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content, and hit that bell icon to be notified of next time I upload a video. And I shall be, and I shall see you next time. And remember, hail Sithis, hail Shiva, goodbye.